Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're going to be testing the Radeon 780M integrated graphics against AMD's lowest end new card, the RX 6400. We've done a similar video before, we've tested the Radeon 680M graphics against NVIDIA's GTX 1630, one of their weakest cards, but today it's an all AMD battle. So which will prevail. Well, as you know, the RX 6400 performs slightly worse in PCIe 3.0 systems. So I've tested the card in PCIe 3.0, 4.0, and when it comes to the 780M graphics, I've just tested them as they are inside this Minis Forum machine. This uses a Ryzen 9 CPU, and we've also got 16 gigs of DDR5 clocked at 5600 megahertz, as opposed to the DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM found inside my i5 system. Now the thing is the GPU is going to be the bottleneck in both scenarios. You're going to see usage figures pegged at 99 100%. So the CPU side of things doesn't matter too much but just bear everything in mind. It's also worth noting that the 780M of course shares the memory with the system. So that is something else. You could probably configure the 780M graphics to be a bit better but this is just an example of how the two compare. So let's get into it and start off with the PCIe 4.0 results. Okay, so let's start off with those comparison results between the 780M and the RX 6400 running in PCIe 4 mode, which it would be running in when paired with a modern system like the i5 12400 FPC I'm using today. We have Cyberpunk 2077 first of all with 1080p in the lowest settings. Had to be careful to choose settings that both graphics solutions could actually run today. So the Radeon 780M managed 52 FPS on average with a 1% low of 38 and a 0.1% low of 23. The 6400 did do better with 66 FPS so we're breaking that 60 FPS barrier according to the benchmark here and the percentile lows were also improved as well which is just as important. Next up then we have Red Dead Redemption 2 1080p with the high textures, medium TAA and everything else set to lowest. We certainly could have gone with ultra textures here and not seen much of a difference to that frame rate. The 780M hit 45 FPS with a few little problems in and around busy areas. The RX 6400 managed a lot better here with 78 FPS and we were also seeing over 60 frames per second when it came to that 0.1% low, sorry 1% low and the 0.1% low wasn't far off with 59. Forza Horizon 5 up next and traditionally this game does not agree with the RX 6400 very much. It doesn't like the fact it's got 4 gigs and I don't think it likes the PCIe X4 aspect either. Um, as you'll see by these results, the 780M hit 55 and admittedly there were some problems with the percentile lows with 44 and 27 respectively, a couple of little dips, but the RX 6400 only managed one frame per second more on average with 56. The 1% low was slightly better at 47 compared to 44, but the 0.1% low was worse than with the Radeon 780M with just 19 FPS compared to 27 here. Grand Theft Auto 5, high textures, everything else set to normal, detail sliders were set to halfway and FXAA was on. The 780M did a decent job with 113 FPS, a 1% low of 78 and a 0.1% low of 73. The RX 6400 however hit 183 and there's certainly a lot more room to turn the settings up with this card. Same can be said for the iGPU to be honest. With the RX 6400, the 1 and 0.1% lows were 1, 2, 3 and 94 respectively in PCIe 4 mode. So it's another win for the RX 6400 in this one. Finally then we have Fortnite. Again, it's a pretty decent performance from the Radeon 780M here with the medium preset and 100% resolution scaling. TAA was also enabled. 79 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 and a 0.1% low of 18. Ignore any judders on screen here for the RX 6400's results. This was just my internet connection and not the card itself. They're doing some work on the internet box thing at the end of the road and 
yeah, my wireless connection is suffering, but my fault really, I should have plugged in the Ethernet cable. 105 FPS, however, with the RX 6400, so a lot better, and the 1% low came back at 91, the 0.1% low was 71, so better results across the board. Now, as I said at the start, the RX 6400 performs worse in PCIe 3.0 systems. So to simulate this, I've set the PCIe Gen in the BIOS to 3.0, and I have a few more results to share with you. Has the gap been closed? Here we are then with those PCIe 3 results. Now, when it came to Cyberpunk, between the Radeon 780M and the RX 6400 in PCIe 3 mode, we were seeing just a handful of FPS, seven to be exact. The 1% low was actually worse at 34 compared to 38, and the 0.1% low did pick up a little bit, it was 32, so still better than what we saw with the iGPU. The result overall of 59 frames per second on average, however, was worse than the RX 6400 in PCIe 4 mode because that was 66, so quite a big gap there. Red Dead Redemption 2, suffered by about 8 frames per second with the RX 6400 in PCIe 3 mode compared to PCIe 4 mode, and the percentile lows also dipped a bit more as well. This result was however still better than what we saw with the Radeon 780M by quite some margin. Forza Horizon 5 again, this does not like the RX 6400, it doesn't like the 6500 XT either to be honest, but that's a whole other story. Here, the RX 6400 actually dipped below the Radeon 780M's results, which were 55 on average, and the 6400 just got 42. The percentile lows also suffered a bit more as well, with 30 and 24 respectively, so... Not brilliant for the RX 6400 in Forza Horizon 5, but this is the only game where it loses out really in both PCIe 3 and 4 modes to the integrated 780M graphics. When it came to GTA 5, this did not care whether we were running the 6400 in PCIe 3 or 4 mode when it came to that average, though the percentile lows did differ a bit. They were however still a lot higher than the Radeon 780M could offer, but I think this was to be expected, this is an integrated solution after all, but I still think this is a decent example of how far iGPUs have come, and these are still solid results, I mean plus 60 FPS with no discrete graphics card, that is certainly nothing to sniff at. Finally then we have Fortnite, which suffered by about 3 frames per second on average with the RX 6400 and PCIe 3 mode. The percentile lows weren't really affected, in fact the card did a little better when it came to that 0.1% figure. Again, both of these results obliterated the Radeon 780M, but there we go. This was to be expected from myself at the start of this video, but I just wanted to see how the best iGPU compared to the lowest end, or let's say cheapest, discrete graphics card from AMD. That's all for this one, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it interesting. As I mentioned, the results will vary depending on the system you are using, the CPU you're using, what system you have the Radeon 780M inside as well, how much RAM is in that PC, this is just an example of what you can expect. And I think it's safe to say that in most cases, however, the RX 6400 is still going to be better most of the time, even if you are using a Gen 3 machine. But I think it's still worth pointing out that integrated graphics have come a long way and the 780M continues to surprise me. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. Thank you for watching.